Hey, what's up, guys? It's your boy Amber. You already know. Right now, we're gonna continue our let's play of Radiator Stories. Where the fuck is Flow? Anyway, let's go back to Jack's house. Let's go back to Jack's. Let's go back to Jack's house to start the next cutscene. Yeah? Okay. Good. Damn. Are you there? Yo, what up, Pops? What the fuck are you doing, Jack? Oh, hey, Pops. What are you doing here? Nigga, you should lock your door, huh? Stop calling me Pops. Anyway, I have a message for you. A message? From who? From Lady Ridley. She's having a birthday party at the castle tomorrow. She wants you to come, too. That's what she said, at least. Yo, hype. You mean, Ridley's feeling better? Yup. She's right as rain again. Wow, that's great news. But, um... What is it? Why did she invite me? I don't know. All I know is she asked me to ask you. Anyway, make sure you come, okay? For sure. Hey, wait! I'm not a knight anymore. They won't let me into the castle. Not a problem. Don't worry about it. Here. Just show this to the guards. It's an invitation from Lady Ridley. Now make sure you show up. Do you hear, Jack? I've got to go. Well, Jack's holding that invitation upside down. <laughs> what a dummy. Well, here's the funny thing. You're supposed to wait a couple of days before you go to release a uh, party. The game will tell you, hey, you have a couple of days. Well, it won't tell you, but you have a couple of days. But because I use these couple of days to do all that fucking recruiting shenanigans, here we are now. So, pff, the scene activates automatically because the time that it would take for me to do all this in a certain well, amount of days, I don't have much choice. I've already used I mean, it. She did ask me and all. It's kind of a pain, but I guess I have to go. <laughs> Radiata Castle. It hasn't been that long since I left. Todd, oh, I love that song. Feels like ages ago, though. Uh, hi, Mr. Guardman. I've got one of these. Okay, go on in. <laughs> Okay, go on in. Fuck, I hate my job. <laughs> so, once now that we're in the castle, this blue save point here, in case you want to you know, save your game temporarily. There's Leonard. We actually cannot deviate much from the path here in the castle. We're pretty, uh, we're pretty tight on where we're supposed to go. Like it's, it's pretty strict. So, um, yeah. We kind of have to go straight up to the 6th floor. That's where the ballroom's at. It's also where the throne room is at. It's also where, well, you know, you get the drill. But, pretty much, that's kind of how it goes. You can still talk to people and shit. Like, these two are still here. Having a conversation about things. And you know what's funny? You know what's really funny? Our fucking friend. We'll call him... We'll call him Steve. Our friend Steve over here on the on the opposite end of the hall. This dude on the far reaches of the galaxy is still fucking bored as shit. So fucking lazy. Hi. Yo, I'll fucking kill you. The elevators only even though it's been repaired, it's only for like important people, as they say, so. It's kind of unfortunate, isn't it, that we have to like, you know, walk up the stairs this way. Not like it matters much anyway. Can you go up the fucking... Yeah, I'm gonna hurt these things. Anyway, I think this is Nina. That's not Nina. Nina has blue hair? No, she doesn't. I don't remember. She's more recognizable, but she looks like Nina. There we go. Fifth floor. In the Navy! Okay, okay. <clears throat> no, no. I'm not doing this. Wait, what? 
throws kill me still. No, I do not think so. You should probably kill yourself for thinking of that, woman. I'm just saying. Anyway, here we are. Episode 19. Ridley's birthday party. Hype, hype. If only she was 19 years old. But I think she's turning 17 today. Uh, I think so. Because she's 16 in the strategy guide. But, like, I think that's before when the game begins. There she is. Jack, say excuse hey, me, you fuck. <laughs> I knew you were just faking it. Jack. You came. Yep. I'm sorry about what happened. Huh? You being fired from the knights. It was my fault. You're still worried about that? Hey, it was really no big deal. I mean, if you ask me, the knights are kind of uptight. Theater Van Core is more my style, you know? I'm glad. Listen, Jack, I need to talk to you. Ridley? Oh, him. You're Jack, right? What are you doing here? Huh? Disgraced former members of the Knights usually aren't allowed in the castle, are they? Cross, what are you saying? He's here because I invited him. It's okay. Forget it, Ridley. Listen, I've got to be heading back home. Jack, don't pay any attention to this idiot. Ouch! You tell him, Ridley. You're starting to sound like your old self again. Jack. If you ever want to talk, stop by my place anytime, okay? See ya! What do you think you're doing, Cross? Jack is one of my guests. No, no. Is that any way for you to talk to your future husband? I don't care what our parents think they decided. I want nothing to do with you. Now buzz off. Ooh, ouch. Ridley. Genius. Nice. Genius shows up at the right time. Well, that was the scene, which is pretty interesting scene. I'm actually a little upset that Jack left early, but you can kind of tell. Uh, even in the manga, like, I'm glad the manga she shows this off even better. Because what happens in the manga is that, um... Ooh, actually, a couple of things are different. So, the character Nina shows up, and Nina has a huge crush on Jack, right? Like, huge. It's from the moment she laid eyes on him, she knew that she wanted him. And then uh, Nina shows up at the party, <clears throat> and when Cross shows up, Jack assumes that Ridley and Cross are together, so he, his heart, like, starts, you can tell, like, he, he's in pain, like, his heart hurts from, from watching them, he's, he, you know, he's like, why do I feel this way, like, I'm upset that they're, they're together or whatever, so, but he doesn't understand that. He doesn't understand why he's upset. That he doesn't understand he likes Ridley or whatever. Get so, out of here! I don't know why I keep thinking there's new weapons on sale. Fuck. But in any case, like, he's he's upset over it, and then Nina comes in and takes him takes Jack away from Cross and Ridley. So, um, <clears throat> pretty much the same thing happens here. I think Jack really leaves because he kind of understands that Cross and Ridley have a thing going on, based on you know forced marriages and shit. So like. I think that's why he leaves. The game doesn't really do a good job of like explaining how Jack feels about the situation because he's always smiling. Like there's no afterthought, nothing like that. But you, I mean, you can kind of tell. Like it's not hard to figure out that hey, you know what? He left because he was feeling uncomfortable on those two. But you know, it's kind of how it is. Oh, I guess we're just waiting then because we've. Oh gosh. Yeah, we gotta wait for Genius's, Genius and and Ridley's scene to take place. Uh, so I guess I'm gonna sleep or some shit. 
or go to my room or some other bullshit. Because I, I want to activate this scene. Like, I'm not trying to... I just want to move along with the story and all that, so... there's That's that's what I'm doing. Anyway, yeah, um... It's really cool. I, I really love Ridley's voice, actually. Uh, it's Stephanie Shea is uh, the voice actor for Ridley. Hey, how much further do we have to go? Almost there. Yeah, this scene right here is one of the most incredible scenes in the game. Genius. There's so much depth and here? profoundness to what goes on in this scene. That it's like really huge turning point of the game. Like it's one of the reasons why a lot of shit happens. Probably the most decisive moment of the game. Or one of, I should say. dead body. Where are we? This is the graveyard of the elves. It's a place in which the fates of elves and humans are deeply entwined. The graveyard of the elves? Like the elf king of old. My brother lies dead, but why? That ancient king brought the human female and child to that benighted castle. And there the Dark Elves were born, along with Elgandars. For the first time, that terrible disease exposed the immortal elves to death. No one was immune. Even the king himself fell victim to it. It infected and killed him. Now it returns to claim my own flesh and blood. When our bodies decay and fall away because of disease or age, elves do not die. The transpiration lets our spirits fly to different bodies where they can mingle with other souls. But the cursed Algandars shuts our souls deep, deep within these cocoons. My brother, why did you perform the transpiration? on that human girl to break the natural laws that separate elf and human Algandas was your inevitable reward brother why in the world did you bring this fate upon yourself was this because of me human filth how much will you make us suffer before you are satisfied will you take and destroy everything we have Will you continue to spread the plague to every land in the world? Why were humans sent to try us so? Why, my brother? <laughs> Did Lord Nogueira die because of me? I honestly don't know. But, I can tell you one thing. Listen to what Zane is saying and it's obvious. There's a long and tragic history between humans and the other races of the world. We need to find some answers and find them soon. Time is running out. I know there must be something I can do to help. You can help? I'm sorry. I had to show you this. But you needed to know what happened. You're the only human who's ever received a transpiritation. <sighs> Man, what a scene, eh, guys? So tragic. And so beautiful and lovely. Oof. <sighs> It, always, it just gives me chills every time. So now that we finished that, we 
kind of unlocked a lot of a lot of things. Uh, some new quests have become available, such as the I forget the one that the king gives you, the one from the last in order. It's like you have to go investigate the uh, second cave. Oh, the the stone miracles. That's what it was. Yeah, well, let's go check that out right quick. It should be available anyway. No. Got work for you, kid. There's the Stone of Miracles. Taught the cane from the Elasian. So it goes, After years of research, we have finally located the Stone of Miracles and would like someone to go get it. See Kane at Elasian for further details. Yes, I am interested in this job, actually. It's super big. It's like such an important thing in the game. Uh, so we talked to Kane, and uh, after all this, we just get this uh, really nice weapon. Uh, hey. It's called the Leviathan. And it's a, it's a superb spear. It's not the best weapon in the game, but it's my favorite by far. <laughs> Dude, I just love when Thanos and and fucking this boy Jack just get into like, conversations. It's always guaranteed to be a good time. Actually, I'm gonna go the long way to Alassian because I want to buy some uh, flea balls. Because after this quest, we'll be, we'll have been fully caught up to where we're supposed to be at in the let's play where we originally were at, at the end of chapter, uh, sorry, wow, chapter, well, anyway, episode 18, we were at the end of that part, where we had finished the Storm of Miracles, and we had done some other shit, too, I forget what it was, but pretty much this, that's how it goes, and, uh, yeah, so that's pretty much all that there is for right now. And that's a lot of shit I'm buying, I know. <laughs> and trust me, I'm not saving over this file because this this file <laughs> God, we're so fucked. Because we can't do some of the quests now. Everything pretty much we fucked up a lot. But that's only because I'm showing it off. Like uh, no way am I gonna do this shit for real. Anyway, there's a loss in. And one thing I wanted to talk about was um, the voice of Ridley actually. I really, really love, love her voice. And I was trying to remember where I uh, heard her voice in the first place. And I love this song. It's the first time it plays in the game. I think it's called... The song is actually called The Labyrinth of Fortune. But we're not actually in the spot where it plays mainly in the game. So, uh, yeah, let's keep that to ourselves for now. But yeah, um, Cain orders us to go find the stone that supposedly has some powers of the gods. Given, given to the stone by some like crazy mistress or something from old uh, Freja, maybe I don't know what the hell her name was. It's it's, it's got to be some play on words on Fre Freya, probably some some stupid shit. But yeah, we already know where the Sutton Cave is because we've been there a million and one times. So it's not too bad. And I love this song. This song is incredible. But look at look at the goddess there on the on the left there. That the I just wish to know so much more about this game. Like I'm so mad that there isn't a sequel that explains more about the lore of the world of this game. Like I really, if I was in this game, I'd probably be a part of Alasian Order just because it, it it by far shows more culture than any other part of Radiata, except for the castle, of course. Angela, that's what it was. Oh, it's not Freya, it's Angela. Oh, okay. She wasn't a guy either. I, I figure how it goes. So, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's sort of like you ignorant fool. <laughs> Rawful. It sucks when people die. He just try to be comforting, Kane. It's okay. Also, she is alive. Damn. You, you fucking ignorant fool, Jack. Don't you know she's not dead? Sorry, you didn't know. Sorry, they ain't gonna cut it. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, Angela is, in my opinion, it's, it's, she's probably like the equivalent of like Joan of Arc, sort of. Like by by what I feel, like, and Joan of Arc is actually my favorite person in history. In case you guys didn't know, she's my absolute favorite person to have ever existed. I, I don't know that that's the kind of person I aspire to be, but also don't want to be. It's so much. Like, I don't want to be a fool like her, but also be as enlightened as she is. Dude, what the fuck? Little girl. 
What are you doing? Well, anyway, I was talking about the voice of uh, Stephanie Scher, who, who is the voice of Ridley, the English voice anyway, the American voice of her. And I was, cause like, April 10th was her birthday, right? Uh, it just passed, so she turned, I forget how old she is now. I don't think she would want me to tell of her age, but anyway, her birthday was uh, April 10th, so, I mean, right now it's, it's not really anything relevant, but like, I was just looking it up and stuff, cause like, I, I, I remember that it was one of my favorite voice actors' uh, birthdays. And I'm not really big on voice actors and voice, voice actresses, you know, but like, that one I knew, so I'm like, okay, let me, let me go over the things that she's done, right? And, and another, another thing is that I was recently playing uh, Persona 2 Innocent Sin on the PSP, and happened to listen to uh, one of the voices there, I had, hold on, which one am I headed? Uh, going to the left, okay, so I gotta go over the bridge. So, yeah, um... Like I was, I was playing. Well, I was playing two games actually. I was playing Don't Me Cry Four, and she's Kyrie's voice, like the girl with the the huge ass. You know, she's got the hips. You know what I'm talking about? Butterface, really nice looking body. Uh, what's that fucker's name? Nero's girl? Yeah, her. I think her name is Kyrie anyway. But that that chick, uh, Stephanie, had voiced her also. The voice of Ridley. See. Hey, get the fuck in there, dude. And I remember after playing Castlevania again, because I was, I don't know, I was playing Portrait of Ruin. Fuck. But it wasn't just Portrait of Ruin, it was also Harmony of Despair. That I noticed she had the same voice for uh, uh, Charlotte Allen. You know, Charlotte, you know, Charlotte, Jonathan, Charlotte, Jonathan, you know, bad girl, but the girl with the spell book. She was also voiced by St Stephanie Shea. Um, but what's the main game? Oh yeah, no, sorry, sorry. It was a um, Persona 2 or something. It was uh, the blonde chick. What the fuck's her name? Lisa, I think. I think it's Lisa. Lisa Silverman, I think. Well, anyway, she did her voice. And then after after I heard her voice in that game, I was like, dude, like, fucking... I want to know what, what other roles she's had, right? So I looked her up, and... Turns out in anime she's done like the voices of like Sailor Moon, Yui from like fucking uh, what the fuck is Yui from? Uh, what the fuck? Uh, what's that? What's that fucking shit? What the hell's that name of that anime, dude? God, it's it's God. What is the name of that anime? It's the one with uh. Uh, Kirito and uh, Asuna and the uh, them niggas. Uh, Sword Art, yeah, Sword Art Online. The voice of Yui. At least I think that's what it was. I think that was uh, the name of that character. Did Orihime's voice from Bleach in the English. Sailor Moon, I already said. Uh, she did that main chick, I forget her name, from uh, Sengoku Basara. Basara or whatever. She also, in some games, she did. Uh, oh, you know, I'm actually gonna fight this thing. She did Princess Serenade's voice from Eternal Sonata. What the fuck? Oh, yeah, she did Hinata's voice also in uh, Naruto. I remember, I actually know she did Mercedes's voice from Moon Sphere. That one was easy to recognize for me, because I'm like, yes, dude, I actually like Mercedes. And another really easy to recognize, well, two easy to recognize voices were one, Somaria. She did Sumeria's voice from Valkyrie Profile 2. And she did uh, Nata Princess Natalia's voice from Tales of the Abyss. So, like, I was e able to recognize her easily because of that. And then I learned about about a bunch of other shit that she did that I didn't even know. Like, for example, she did uh, Marina's voice in Romance and Saga. The, the Minstrel song, the PS2 remake that came out. I had no idea she did that voice. And, like, it's funny because I listen to that voice a lot. She apparently did... Uh, Eriko's voice from the first Persona game. Like, it's crazy. She does so much shit, dude. It's like, uh, pretty, pretty, uh, damn outstanding. Anyway, this is the room where the stone is at because, you know, of course, you see the cutscene. And that thing right there, don't be deceived. That shit is a fucking enemy. Like, <laughs> you gotta fight that, that motherfucking piece of shit. Oh, actually, she also did uh, Eric Lacard's voice from Castlevania Judgment. 
Although I absolutely hate Eric, Eric Lacard's, uh, his the way he looks in that game is just stupid. I think it looks like a piece of shit. Then against a lot of characters look like a piece of shit in that game. Like, come on, my, my girl Maria? They fucked up Chinoa also? Like, what the hell are they thinking, dude? Trap Octopus. Alright, time to fuck you up, Trap Octopus. Radio Smash! Yeah, speaking of the voice actresses, um, she also did fucking Lilith's voice from Cross Edge. Like, she did, um. Still alive? I thought he'd be good. Oh, she did, uh, Rebecca Chambers' voice in Resident Evil Mercenaries. Oh, fuck, I'm blind. Oh, god, I'm blind. Ah, big deal. And Estelle's voice from Legend of Heroes Chosen the Sky. <laughs> What's wrong? Dude, I can't even fucking see, man. Oh, she did Eno's voice, too. And uh, Julia Chang's voice in Tekken Tag Tournament 2. Alright, you know what? I'm gonna drop this because I keep talking about this. Uh, I should move on. Also, Fighting Spirit for the win. Oh, last last thing, last thing. She did Darja and Kajel's voice from A Fire Emblem Awakening. And that's it. That That's it. That's all I'm gonna say. That, that's, that's it. I'm not gonna talk about anything else. But as you saw there, Leviathan Spear, too strong. I'm gonna use that shit, like, non-stop. At least, there's the Storm of Miracles. Let's report back to Kane. The Leviathan Spear looks so nice, dude. Like, it's crazy. Let me, let me show it off, because... Uh, stupid. Why would you press triangle? Anyway, yeah, it's, it's got freeze effects, and it actually glows. Like, that glow that you see there? It actually fucking glows. Yeah, I'm gonna see if I can show it off in a battle or something. It's too fresh, though. Like, it's... What the fuck? I still didn't equip it. Darn it, dude. Did I not put that motherfucker on, though? Like, yo, don't bullshit me. I I put that motherfucker on, dude. Anyway. Check out the spear. What's wrong? You see the way this beautiful-ass spear glows? Like, it's, it's amazing, dude. Look at look how beautiful it looks. It's crazy. Look at that shit, dude. Oh, I cannot get enough of this spear. I want a spear like that. I really, really do. And I, I Jack, you are a lucky son of a bitch. Like I use don't usually covet things, but like man, I want that. I want that, man. Like holy shit. Alright, let's go with the guard link. I want to show off what this awesome move looks like. Check it out. Thousand Spears! It looks so fresh. Oh my god. Oh, look how sexy that looks. Oh my god, so sexy. Oh, this thing's on me. Conrad, kill it. What's wrong? Oh, it will seem that kill him. Uh, I was hoping it'd be the. Uh, what's wrong? Oh, a tack link. Tack link is good. But I have all those in my original file, so it's all good. But you see now, that. Spear is sexy as all motherfucking hell, right? So like, I don't. I am always. I've always thought about this. How does the spear do damage? Does, do you have to like? <clears throat> does the spear like the end of it looks like it doesn't really? <clears throat> Damn, I throw that. How does how should I say? It looks fluffy. You know, like it looks like it looks. If it, it feels like it would be soft. You know what I mean? Like it won't really hurt. But I know that shit's false. It's just cause like there's a blade on the at the end there, but there's like some kind of like water or something. Dude, dude's getting wrecked. Conrad just got fucked by Gerald. And then 
He continued to get fucked by me. What's wrong? Fucking shit. Herb extract is stolen. What's wrong? Nothing's wrong, Gerald. Go about your way. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Stop. Alright. Yeah, it's... I don't know, it's something I've always thought about. Like, why? Like, how do I actually deal damage with this thing? Like, what what are the properties of that blade and what makes it hurt? You know, like, if, if the spear isn't the part that you hit with, like, let's say you hit with the outer rims of it, right? Like, the outter edges, and you hit with that part, the part that glows, does it deal damage? If it does, what kind of damage does it deal? What are the properties of it? Does it burn you? Does it does it freeze you? Does it, you know, what does it do with it exactly? Oh my god, it's the fucking hoppers, yeah. And I might be overthinking it, and I, in fact, I most certainly am sure that I'm overthinking it, but it, it, I just can't stop these questions from flowing out of my mind. It's just something I, I wish to know, I just, I just wish to know, dude. I wish to fucking know. So, I mean, there you have it, so. Oh, shit. So, after that Stone of Miracles quest, there's a new one that actually, uh, there's a new one that we get a chance to do and it's I think it's something called like very important like top secret mission or something or top secret quest it's some weird name like that and it's not really all that important but if you want to recruit Thanos I, I suppose that it is of utmost importance because if you miss Thanos you essentially miss, miss Elwin if you miss Elwin you miss out on Nyx and Nyx is the ultimate character you want to recruit now we don't know shit about Nyx right now but we will we will learn about Nyx in the future. It won't be too far into the future either. A couple more story events. We decide on which path we want to we want to take later. Like what our what our ending is gonna be once we decide that. Cause we kind of decide that midway into the game. We decide what ending we're getting. So uh, once we make that huge decision, which is coming up pretty soon, then we will be able to uh, look at Nyx, like, we'll find him, or it or whatever the fuck, don't really want to give off a gender, oh, where am I going, but like, we'll, we'll find Nyx and we'll be able to recruit, alright, so we're in just chilling, just walking like a homie, <laughs> hey. oh fuck, I guess I gotta go over to Kane. My mistake. I'm stoops. I forgot. I, I knew I was going the right way. I was like, where am I going? I was like, no, 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 no. I was like, I thought I was going the right way originally. But then, for some reason, I thought I had to talk to Thanos. What's wrong with me? What's wrong? It's Alvin. We'll recruit him soon. We won't get him yet, but he'll be soon. Is that that nigga, uh, Eugene? Yeah, that's that nigga, Eugene. Dude, I want those hexagon glasses. Those shits are epic. Let me get them. Actually, I really do want them. Man. All I do is want shit these days. <laughs> oh, fuck. Yep. The son of a bitch. It's not the fucking Stone of Miracles. We fucked up. Really? that um that pose yeah like well though that the camera was in that Dutch angle where it showed him kind of towering over Jack or over the camera I 
it's probably my favorite thing in the game so far. Like that that music playing with that pose is just too good. But yeah, this orb, he is right. He is not wrong. Cain has said that a god spoke to him. I wonder which god. But nonetheless, a god talked to him and spake unto him that it would inextricably alter our fate, which is very true. And those are all the dwarf requests, sir. Hmm, I see. They are asking for a great deal. Yes. We have to avoid making the situation any worse. Do you mean that we should accede to the dwarves' demands? We can't give them everything they want. But we should compromise where we can. Compromise? No! I refuse to accept that! Why must we be the ones to back down? Why should we bow our heads before such insolence? We are the ones who provide the funds that allow the dwarves to dig their mines. We can't lie down before them so meekly. If you're so strongly opposed, I presume that you have some sort of alternative suggestion. Yes, let me take the Noir Mouton Brigade out to the dwarf village. Send knights to the village? Do you want to start a war? No, not a war. We just need to put on a show of strength to improve our negotiating position. But even if that works as you plan, have you considered how the other non-humans will react? This is a time of great tension. Such an action might well increase the danger. Exactly. I completely agree. If we send out the knights, the non-humans could respond in kind. Yes. A show of force might work on this occasion, but there is too much at stake in the long term. I believe that this must be a time for restraint. Dynas, what do you think? Sir, I think we should avoid any clumsy efforts to force the issue. You would choose the coward's way as well? If we give in to them now, the dwarves will only demand more from us in the future. And not only the dwarves either. The elves and the goblins too. Soon they'll be sending their demands and ultimatums. You mark my words. The dignity and honor of Radiata will be worth nothing. Yes, you do have a point. But still... I've decided. We will dispatch the Radiata Knights as a show of force. Yes, a wise choice, my lord. But Lord Lox, the danger! There is nothing to fear. The troops will only be a block. Yes, but even so... Dinus, have the knights prepare to move out. Sir. Look at that smug-ass look on his face. <laughs> Cross, what happened in the meeting? Oh, it's you. You should expect to become very busy soon, Knight Captain. What do you mean? The knights have been ordered to the dwarf village to demonstrate Radiata's strength. What? But why? <laughs> it will be wonderful. I can see the shock on those idiot dwarf faces already. They'll be begging us for peace soon enough. You stupid fool. What was that? Why are we sending soldiers to negotiate? Listen, it won't be just the dwarves. Soon we'll lose the trust of all the fairy creatures. Be careful what you say. These are the orders of the Commander-in-Chief himself. Cross, you really want to fight war, don't you? As a knight, I must always be prepared to defend my country. I understand, Lily. I know you've been under great pressure since your promotion. Don't touch me! You insolent wretch! <laughs> Why? Why have we allowed it to come to this? Uh, no. Not now. Uh, it's happening again someone 
inside my head. was a success. They gonna fuck Lucian? Why are you just staring at her all awkward like? Well, we all already know something's fucking terribly wrong with Ridley. We also know that something's terribly wrong with Lucian. Or maybe something's going on behind the scenes. You know it's funny that when I first recorded this the first time, uh Kane was actually walking up this way from going at uh, Jack's house because he's at Jack's house from like 3 to 4 p.m. and he walks up here and I beat him to the fucking shrine and then I talk to him you know to activate the scene and after I leave the fucking the after, after I leave the the shrine I come out and I see him walking towards the shrine I'm like what the fuck nigga you lying ass piece of scumbag <laughs> but it's all good it's all good I mean yeah it, it's it's weird like I, I I have a huge problem with uh, how insolent Cross is during that scene because, he, you know, he essentially gives us shit, like pretty much Jack and Gans shit for being insolent themselves, or I guess hey. just Jack really, but... Yo, shut the fuck up, Thanos. It might. Well, anyway, here's the uh, top secret mission, but let me, let me get this one off my chest. So, fucking Cross gives us hell. For being insolent when we, you know, disregard his orders or whatever, because we make the right decision. But then, of course, he gets to talk all kinds of bullshit at the uh, that meeting, which should only include the top rank, top ranking members of Radiata. So that would only mean that since Dynas is the commander of the whole Radiata army, and Cross is, I guess, right under him, that he must be someone of great importance inside of the castle. But that is still not an excuse for his behavior towards everyone that pretty much outranks him. He is the lowest rank in that entire room. And he's talking out of turn. So that's kind of fucked up, don't you think? That we get the, the shit end of the trade there, but he can talk and in, in fact, everyone agrees with his plan which is like absolute fucking cockamamie. Uh, it, it's just complete fucking cockamamie like it's it's ridiculous i don't understand why they agreed to that like if you, you can actually debunk his whole argument point after point he's saying that you can like you know everyone's gonna give their demands and ultimatums however the end result is that you can choose whether or not you want to give into a demand an ultimatum is is something different it's not really a demand but it's it's different it's like you have no choice but to accept it and the, the human, you know, radiata, those humans aren't really exactly in a position where they won't benefit from refusing any kind of demand. So there won't be any ultimatums being thrown out. And on top of that, like, radiata don't actually need to take any demands at all. Like, what, what would they benefit from that? I mean, there's, there's one thing. You can try to and benefit from, like, uh, improved negotiations between the fairy creatures and the human beings, but, like, at the end of the day, you're not required to do any of that. You know, you can all just move about your business and, and not have to worry about trade and any other, of that other shit. I mean, fuck. There's, like, pretty much, this. there's a whole huge region that the human beings own that doesn't belong to the fairy creatures. Like, they all have their own little lands, and human beings have, like, a huge majority of the world. So, like, it's, like, ridiculous. I don't really see what the problem is. Like, if anything, there's a bigger problem with the dwarf people because they are the ones that would demand something from the human beings, but humans don't have to have, they don't have to, you know, exceed at all. They could just be like, well, if you give us this much, then we'll do that. But th see, what I'm seeing is that from this standpoint, the dwarves have absolutely no power over humanity because the dwarves are in need of humanity. You can almost say that fucking dwarf village is a suzerain state of Radiata. So like, if that goes to, you know, when we when we think about it like that, it stands to reason 
that we don't have to accept anything that you know they're they're trying to demand from us because we're the ones who are giving them we're their main supplier if we stop they die so like i don't know how people even completely ignore that shit like they're like oh cross is right yeah everyone's gonna start throwing out their demands all this this and that and that's not like dude did you guys even think about what the fuck you were doing i'm like cross just fucking hoodwinked y'all like he just wants to fight it's what he wants to do like niggas did you really think about it and like it really goes to show you who are the the idiotic people in radiata like everyone there pretty much I mean, Lord Josne is kind of stupid, you know, at first in the beginning. But it, in all actuality, him and Lucian are like the only two really sane, and um, they're the really the two most sane people in there that at least make the most proper decisions. Because he's he was worrying about like war between like everyone else, because like well, the non-humans will absolutely. Uh, also, I don't like the way that sounds, Thanos. I think that's a trap, honestly. <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm in agreement with you, Thanos. No, it's not legit, dude. Ah, oh, Jack, you naive fucking idiot. Yeah, he's an idiot. I just tell us that now, Jack just wants to go to his own demise and might as well for Kongi. Okay. You worry too much. Well, this will be a good learning experience for him. You know, it's kind of the same thing when I tell people, yo, why don't you listen to me when I tell you this is and that? It's like, sometimes it's not it's not worth, like, warning people about shit. Like, even my friends do this. I tell them, yo, don't do this because this shit will happen. Or, like, something so-and-so or whatever. And it almost feels like, yo, they're just ungrateful or something. Or they just don't listen. Because you tell them. You, like, I've told... I've, I'm telling people, like, dude, I have more experience than you do. Like, I've been through this shit. I know what it's like. Why don't you, like, listen to what I have to say? It's like they want to fucking die or, like, learn the hard way or something. It's like, dude, I'm telling you this because I care about you, man. If I'm telling you not to go there, it's because I don't want you to go there. You, something's gonna happen to you. Like, no, no, I know better. Like, come on, I'll be careful. Like, dude, you don't know better, first of all. That's what I'm telling you. And second of all, if you really are so sure about yourself, then, like, I mean, I don't, you don't have superpowers. You can't really predict what life can can do to you, uh, what's going to be thrown at your, at your way. And, I mean, you're only a human being. You can't really handle everything. Like, if something happens and you're powerless, then you can't do shit about it. But, like, I have kind of have stopped warning people about shit because, I'm like, I'm like, they let them learn the hard way. Uh, I mean, fucking don't throw pros for swines, essentially. So, um, it's kind of where, where I've been headed in my life. Like, you just stop helping other people because they just don't appreciate the advice I give them. And I am that person that will say, I, I fucking told you so, man. No, because I want them to understand. I'm like, dude, if you had listened to me, maybe next time, if you even happen to survive, oh, I knew it, it's an ambush. Raffle. What a moron. Bring it on. Dude, I'm level 50. Damn, he brought like fucking three of his buddies. This shouldn't even count as being boss music. This is not gonna be... This is not gonna be big. This is gonna be a really simple fight. Actually, they're a little stronger than the usual suspects. Alright, this guy's been frozen for like an eternity, holy shit. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's pretty much what it is. Like, I used to not be the person that'd be like, I told you so, but ever since people stopped listening to me, and then when shit happens to them, and then, like, I know they already feel bad for not listening, but I will remind them. I don't give a fuck at this point, but I'm telling you, like, I told you. I will make him feel like shit for it, because I, I'm tired of people doing that shit to me. Like, I'm trying to help him out of the kindness of my heart, and they want to go out and, and, like, not listen and shit. I'm like, dude, come on, man. Like, come on, don't don't, don't be a fucking idiot. Like, if I'm trying to help you out, I'm trying to help you out, right? And it said the reward was 20k, so... I'm assuming Thanos has the 20k. <laughs> like, 
If I get gypped out of 20,000 doggos, I'm gonna be upset. I don't remember if you actually do get gypped out of 20,000 doggos, but that's that. Oh shit! I just remembered. I forgot to fucking load the game before doing this quest. Ah, fuck. Well, I mean, essentially, I mean, fucking, we were pretty much done with the episode. All we did was do some story segments and rant about a couple of dumb shit. That's all we really did this episode. I mean, not much, not really much to go on. Uh, also, I think the next part of the, of, you know, whatever scene is about to play next, I think you have a little bit of time before it plays out. Like, it's gonna activate pretty soon. I think it activates sometime during the day. Or maybe you have a day until it activates, but pretty much the next scene takes place in Earth Valley. A continuation of the events that are already unfolding. So, uh, it might happen later in the afternoon, I don't know. But in any case, uh, you want to do all the quests before all this happens, of course. If you don't do them, that is too late. That's it. You can't go back, so. Hey, what the fuck? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I understand, Thanos. Yep. That's also true. So, uh, at this point, when you do all this, he'll be like, "Boo hoo, no work for you." Like, cause <laughs> that's what he says when there's no work. But I guess that's it then. For now, that that's it then. I guess I'm gonna end the episode here. In the next episode, we'll continue with the scenes of Radiata, where like the, the whole like fucking War Mutan Brigade will be over at Earth Valley. So I'll see you then. Thanks for watching. And leave a comment, rate it if you liked it, and I'll see you in the next episode. Alright, peace out, and keep styling, y'all.